in this video we're gonna continue to analyze what happens when we let n go to infinity. But first, um, let's compute the variance. We're interested in the variance of uh, x sub n. And uh, um, we'll use a formula that we learned in previous uh, class, that is the variance of uh, this x sub n when we condition on x sub n minus 1, it comes from uh, two sources. The first source is the variance of uh, this random variable we take expectation. The second source is the expectation of this conditioning we take variance All right and we let um, the variance of the number of offspring produce, uh, produced by a single individual uh, by sigma square right and this is defined by nothing but uh, j from 0 to infinity j minus mu square uh, probability of j now back to this formula what happens is we're interested in uh, this quantity and this quantity for first let's look at uh, uh, this quantity, that is uh, the ex conditional expectation of the nth generation uh, conditional previous generation. And we've learned in previous video that this is uh, uh, mu times x n sub 1. It's essentially mu times um, generation uh, the previous generation population I mean that this is this is quite intuitive if you guys think about it this is average uh, number of offsprings of one individual and this one is uh, the population so um, and then the expected number of individuals in next generation is nothing but the previous gen's population multiplied with average number of offsprings each individual will have. And next one is, uh, is the variance of, of x sub n given uh, x sub n minus 1. Uh, and we can we can think about this using a very similar strategy that is uh, we consider instead of uh, consider x sub n minus 1 directly we consider this is uh, our x n sub 1 is uh, sub n minus 1 is k then this is no longer a variable length sum it's a fixed length sum which uh, has k terms and this is a sum from uh, i from 1 to k and zi and because of iid especially the independence we have no covariance and this becomes the sum we can take out the sum and this equals the variance of ci which is we assume it equals sigma square and this is uh, k times sigma square and this implies 
now we get rid of this k so the variance of x sub n given x sub n minus 1 is then uh, sigma square times x and sub y. Now I will, uh, what we would like to do is we plug in these two terms back in this formula and then we have this variance of uh, x sub n is then expectation of uh, the variance, which is a sigma square x n sub 1 plus the variance of the expectation, which is mu times x n sub 1. And uh, keep this in mind, sigma square and uh, mu are two constants. We can pull it out. from the first term, sigma square, and uh, the second term, when we pull out from the variance, uh, we have a square in it, so this is mu square, variance of uh, x sub m minus 1, and in previous video, we derived um, an Keep in mind, so uh, we have the same assumption that is uh, the zeroth generation has one individual. Um, and in previous video, we derived uh, this expectation is uh, sigma square times mu raised to the m minus 1 power. And now Let's look at uh, this term right here. And let's compare it with the term um, we're interested in to obtain the value of. Um, this is the variance of the x nth, like the nth generation, and this is m minus 1's generation. And we can exploit this recurrence relation, and what happens is uh, we can simply um, represent uh, we have a mu square factor, and then we write down a similar formula with what we just derived, we have this is a sigma square the expectation of m minus 2 plus mu square variance of x sub m minus 2. All right. And again, this we use the result of previous derivation. Um, this is a mu to the m minus 1 power then what happens is uh, we subtract, uh, we plus this term with the first term we obtained. We have this as a sigma square, and we have two mu term, and they becomes mu raised to the nth power plus, and we have of mu to the fourth power here, the variance of uh, x sub m minus 2. And this actually, this iteration procedure can go on and on. That is, uh, we copy this down, and the variance of uh, x n sub 2, this becomes sigma square times expectation of x sub n minus 
3 plus mu square variance of x and sub 3. If we let this procedure uh, go on n times and we combine all the terms in front, uh, if you guys think about it, uh, right here, this is mu raised to the n minus 3 power, and these two terms combine uh, will get us mu to the uh, m plus 1 power. And what happens is we can pull out a sigma for all previous terms. And this is mu raised to the m minus 1 power plus mu to the nth power. And this term we have for uh, this term, we have mu raised to the m plus 1 power. And later we will have sure mu raised to the n plus 2 and blah 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 until we reach like uh, uh, x is 0 which is 1 so um, and we'll have mu raised to the 2n minus 2 to power you guys can verify the indexing uh, so here I'll just uh, say this is mu n uh, mu to the 2n minus 2 to the power and this we you we have used the expectation of uh, x0 is x0 is 1 okay and then plus and here we have mu to the 2n to the power variance of x0 and we want to emphasize that x0 is non-random so this variance is 0 now this becomes uh, a geometric series partial sum. All right, and here I just copy down the conclusion, and you guys can verify it's correct. Um, when mu is one, and then we only have. Uh, n terms right here so we totally have n terms and they are all 1 which means this is n times sigma squared and when mu is not 1 which means we have to use the geometric series partial sum uh, formula first we can pull out uh, mu raised to the n minus 1 power and uh, this is 1 plus mu till mu raised to the n minus 1 to power and which is uh, 1 minus mu divides this 1 minus mu to the n power In the last part of uh, this video, we're going to analyze the limiting behavior. That is, we define the following probability. That's uh, pi zero, which is we let this branching process go on indefinitely, and we check if the population will die out. All right. And this is a this is a probability of the population uh, eventually dying. On the, the assumption of the zeroth generation has uh, one individual. And we, uh, we derive that, recall, we derive that uh, expectation of uh, the nth generation is uh, mu to the nth power. 
then we also know that this is nothing but the sum of j from 0 to infinity um, times the probability of the nth generation has uh, j individuals. Uh, and keep this is nothing but the definition of the expectation. And because when j is 0, it has no contribution to this expectation. So this is uh, j starts from 1 uh, of this sum. And now, because this j starts from 1, uh, we can actually bind the sum below. This is because j is greater than 1 uh, for j from uh, 1 to infinity. And then we have this is uh, from j to from 1 to infinity, j is b. Uh, becoming this one right here. And we sum this probability. Uh, and keep keep this in mind. Um, X n is j um, is mutually exclusive to uh, xn is i if uh, j is not i. Uh, in in a single generation, we cannot have two populations. We only have one population, which means uh, this is nothing but uh, the probability of uh, xn is uh, equals 1 or 2 or 3, etc. And the same thing as xn is greater than or equal to 1, and which equals 1 minus uh, x sub n is 0. And now let's recall. This sum. This sum is mu to the nth power. As we can see, uh, when mu is less than 1, first of all, mu, mu has to be greater than 0 because uh, uh, this mu is non negative, so its expectation should be non negative. When mu is between 0 and 1, we let n go to infinity, and uh, this becomes the left side is apparently zero. The right side is just uh, one minus the limit of the nth generation dies out. As we can see. Um, this implies, and always keep in mind, uh, this is a weak condition on uh, zeroth generation has one individual. So this limit, given we have one individual uh, at the zeroth generation, uh, this is one. And it means, it means what? It means this branching process um, the population, this branching process will converge to uh, this absorbing state. The population will die out. Um, when mu is 1, all right, this is a, a critical case, and and we'll we'll skip this case uh, because uh, we have to use um, much more advanced knowledge than uh, the scope of this class. Um, so we'll skip. But the conclusion is uh, 
it still died. So the population still died. Uh, and next is we consider when mu is greater than one. All right. And what is pi zero, which is the population will die out. And here we'll use a trick. We we'll use a trick we have been using many times. It's uh it's we'll use this a one step conditioning trick. And we compute the uh this uh pi zero using a condition probability which we condition on uh x1. So this is uh, p of um, the population eventually die out. is equal to we condition on x1 all right um, and keep this in mind um, let me write down uh, this is given x0 is 1 if we condition on x1 we have a sum of j from 0 to infinity the probability of the population eventually dies out given x1 is j times x1 is j given x0 is 1. As we can see, this, this is nothing but uh, the transition probability which we define in the very first part of this video. This is nothing but p sub j. And how about this one? This probability is we have uh, j individuals um, at time number one and if the population eventually dies out it means the offspring of all these uh, j individuals die out For each single individual, if you guys think about, um, for each single individual, the probability of its offspring will die out is nothing but pi zero. And for a single individual, um, It's nothing but pi zero for a single individual. Now we have j individuals, and because of they are iid, uh, so we have j individuals and all their offspring eventually die out. And because this is iid, this is nothing but pi zero ray to the j to power and therefore we reached an equation that is uh, pi zero and uh, equals j from zero to infinity uh, pi zero raised to the j to power multiply with pj and p sub j is our transition probability and now we'll just to see a very simple example of how um, this is uh, computed. And we consider P 
P0 uh, is a quarter. And P0 means uh, the individual has uh, a quarter chance of having no offsprings. And P1 is uh, a quarter. It means we have 25% uh, of chance having one individual as offspring for an individual. And P2 is uh, half. Um, and the question asks us to compute pi zero. And apparently mu is uh, mu is greater than one is because mu is equal to zero times a quarter plus one times a quarter plus uh, two times half. This is apparently greater than one. And by this equation, we can see that pi zero satisfies a quarter. Um, j is zero. When j is zero, this pi zero raised to the zeroth power is one plus uh, a quarter, which is this probability um, times pi zero. J equals one here plus one half pi zero square. And this is a quadratic equation. It actually has uh, two roots. And uh, we choose the smallest positive root uh, as pi zero. And uh, pi zero can be computed which is equal to uh, 50%. And why we want to choose this, uh, this is much, much more advanced because we have to prove using uh, a fixed point theorem on the moment generating function. So uh, I'm not going to do that. And so that's it for uh, this lecture.